what actually are you going to be doing here while you're while you're actually at the COP15 to to uh, further these ideas? Well, I've got a panel in a few minutes with some of the indigenous people we're working with, some of the people who can better explain the technology. How do you how do you measure the carbon sequesters in the soil? How do you use these gadgets so that they can easily monitor their own forests? And um, what's going on uh, to to try and get negotiations with the Amazon Basin and Tanzania with the legislators. So it's quite a complex panel. And then I have to go away and then I have to come back on the 16th and there's, there are various panels um, that I'm on then. You, you've been doing this work for, for so many years now. Do you have a different sense, a different sense of hope now than you did then? Do you feel more hope? Do you feel less hope? You know, in, in many ways, uh, the world has deteriorated rather rapidly in the, the last sort of 50 years. And as I've said before, and I keep coming back to this, this idea of carbon, you know, trading carbon credits, it's, it's not right to put a commercial value like that on the forest as far as I'm concerned. But when you consider that uh, in, in Africa, in the Congo Basin, which is one of the great rainforests, the Chinese are being offered concessions and uh, selling off the forest for logging, extractive services. Then this money that can be paid, at least in the, in the short term, by the polluters, might be the one thing that we need to save the forest while we get the world to its senses and learn how to live more sustainably. And by the way, it's not only CO2. It's also all the methane emitted by the um, cattle and hog industry that's doing as much damage with greenhouse gases as, uh, as the CO2 emitted by cars. And presumably the forests, also the big forests, are, are quite crucial in, in, in how climate evolves, climate patterns. Yeah, they are. They're the lungs of the world and they keep the air moist. And as global warming in increases, then the forests are going to be more at risk of fire. And, you know, we have made a horrible mess. There's the oceans becoming acidified. And that is something nobody's talking about, but that in turn can affect climate change. And I was just in Greenland, and I stood with Inuits at the foot of a great ice cliff, and I saw huge slabs of ice break off and thunder down with a great reverberating crash. And I saw the tears run down their eyes and from their eyes because they said their land was crying out for help and a huge river gushed from the foot of this ice cliff and before no water no melting even in the summer i guess there's really quite a lot to be learned from those people because most of what we, we in the north have learned has come from from the scientists from the media and so forth what what how would you typify the way that the indigenous people respond when they're seeing their world um, deteriorate? They feel desperate. I, I think they feel really desperate. That's why so many people like in Ecuador are killed and they're fighting to try and keep the oil companies out. And, you know, I went straight from Greenland where in some cases land is coming out of the ice that was trapped by the ice uh, sheet since the last ice age. But then I went straight from there to Panama and met indigenous people who were having to make careful plans to move their people gradually off the offshore islands where they've lived for hundreds of years because they're vanishing under the water as the sea levels rise. Yeah, yeah. There's a question from someone who's right here in Copenhagen. I'm not sure if he's here for the conference or comes from Copenhagen, uh, but he says, uh, it's great to see you online. Uh, what is your vision of the role of technology in your work? Well, technology is actually um, helping us quite a bit. And I think technology is as good as the people who are using it. And if we want to use technology for good, then it can be very, very helpful. So the um, working with Google to help the local people to monitor their forests, using the technology to assess how much CO2 is sequestered in these forests, how valuable are they in that material sense of the word. Uh, we use technology to map chimpanzee range, to see 
um, where it's likely that most chimps are, you know, because there's a lot of habitat left, where species are endangered because forests are getting more and more fragmented, where might it be wor worthwhile to, to build up a, a corridor? We can do all that with satellite imagery and spatial mapping. Good. Well, we'll have to end on technology, Jane, I'm afraid, but thank you so very much for coming in and just opening our eyes to many of these issues. Thank you. Thank you.